hey y'all welcome back we're in the tunnel today welcome back to another garner's journey homestead if you're wondering why my hair is looking like this as i came to the tunnel it started pouring down raining so that is what it is today it's about 50 degrees today it's a 57 in the tunnel so it's not warm but it's not super cold it's pleasant but today um we're gonna talk about some of the top common seed starting issues because we're in that season of seed starting and we're going to start some more seeds today um nothing new um a lot of this is repeat but as i'm starting seeds i'm going to talk through with you some of the common um seed starting mistakes and then i can also show you some demonstrations as well so if you're brand new to me thank you so much for stopping by i live in tennessee i'm in zone 7b so you may be in zone 7b in another state welcome let me know what state you're in um, if you are new. And then if you're one of the people that always hang out with me, thank you so much for coming back. Y'all know I'm hype because it's seed starting season. And just in a few months, the weather will change and we will be outside getting ready for the summer garden. And y'all know I love it. Now, I have enjoyed this break during the fall. And break meaning it's just not as fast paced. I'm still growing food. We still got plenty of food in the tunnel. So if you're new here, you can check out my last garden tour video and see what all we have growing. And then also um, I have started a seed starting playlist. So I will put this video in this playlist, but also the other videos that I've done just for this season around seed starting or buying seed seed hauls whatever that is it will all be in the playlist so i encourage you to go back and watch the ones that you haven't watched yet so let me start off by saying this if you are watching this video and you are still on the fence about whether or not you should start your own seeds let me push you off the fence okay let me push you off the fence because why not start your own seeds why not? What do you have to lose? Because if it doesn't work, you can always go buy you a transplant at dollar, um, at big lot, big lots, y'all. Lowe's, Home Depot, the nursery, farmer's market, all that. You can always go buy a transplant. But why not start seeds? Now, you may say, well, I don't have all the stuff. I don't have the equipment <clears throat> and all that. I did a video on seed starting supplies. In the video, I talked about what is ideal, what is preferred, but I also told you some things that could work that may not be ideal, right? So how I start my seeds now and what I'm doing is not the way when I first learned. I didn't have all the equipment. I didn't have all the setup. Now I will tell you that also in that video, I talked about like, this is ideal and this is the way. Like, for example, when it comes to light, you need a grow light. Put it in front of your windowsill. I would be remiss if I tried to make you believe and make you think that you can put it in front of your windowsill and it's going to be okay. It's not going to be okay. You're going to need some light. So either it's going to be outside or you're going to have to get a grow light. But if I had to go back in my mind in that video and what I talked about, what do you need to start seeds? You need seed. You need a, a medium to grow it in. Um, so whether it is a pot, it's a six cell tray, it's a soil block, which soil blocking I showed you last week, all you need is soil and a tray, right? It can be a yogurt cup, it can be an egg crate, it could be a red solo cup, it can be any of those things. Now, again, in the video, I didn't talk about red solo cups, I didn't talk about yogurt cups, but can you put seeds in there and they'll grow? They will. It takes some extra measures, right? It's not the ideal way, but you can grow seeds. Here's my point. If you want to learn how to grow seeds, this is a perfect time to learn. It's a perfect time to learn. Walk with me through this journey as we're starting seeds each and every week. I'm literally taking you on my journey of starting seeds. Will we have 100% success? Probably not. Will we have great success? We will. Claiming it. Absolutely. But why not start your own seeds it's way more cost effective you get a chance to throw, grow other varieties and you will learn a skill that will help you tremendously so that's my little pitch for starting seeds if you are on the fence consider yourself pushed off the fence now you may be watching and say okay 
you don't get to push me off the fence. I want to learn how to start my own seeds, Barbara. I do. But I've tried for the last two to three years and it just doesn't work. Okay, I hear you. Let's talk about the reasons why it doesn't work. That's what this video is all about. So I'm going to hit like the top three or four reasons why it does not work, what some common issues are, and I'm going to just share my experience of how I've been able to combat that, help with that, suggestions and tips. If there is another issue that I don't talk about, that you want me to talk about, just put it in the comments. I'll answer your question. If I know, I'll share it. If I need to do another video, I will. Plus, there's tons of other people in the community that can also help you as well. So, we're gonna also start some seeds today. So I already got my trays out now. I know you like, Barbara, why you got all pink and one black? Trust me, it's bothering me as much as it's bothering you. But I think my other one is in the house. It's pouring down raining. I'm not going to run up there and get it. So it's going to be black. It's going to be off today. Nobody knows but me and you. The seeds are not going to know what color pot they in. But trust me, it's burning. I would rather just like not have one, right? <laughs> but that would be six more seeds we can't start. So we're going to rock with it. Okay, let's fill up our um, pots with soil and let's talk about it. Okay, I am using a potting mix look that has a piece of bark in it all i do is throw it away it comes very infrequently i just happen to see that but if it's that big you'll see it some people don't use potting mix because um the bark or whatever is in it again if you buy a good quality one usually those are going to be few and far between um but you can also oh there's a little worm how about that let me show y'all this used to freak me out. Can you see him? He right there. Worm all up in the soil. Right there. We actually just gonna put him back. Let him hang out and then we'll put him maybe in the ground or something. Um, okay, so back to business. Let me show you, even though this is potting mix, it's a premium potty mix. You can see how light and fluffy it is, right? It's not thick and dense and all of that. This particular potty mix is, the brand is Bacto, B-A-C-T-O. I use Bacto or typically Happy Frog. That is typically what I use and I've had great success. Other things that you can use is a seed starting mix, right? A seed starting mix it'll be it'll say seed starting mix on the bag it usually comes in a bag like so I've never really seen them in big bags that are bulk when I first started seeds I used a seed starting mix but because I'm growing so much it's not practical for me to use a seed starting mix so I get potting mix because I can get it cheaper and more in bulk than I can a seed starting mix. Okay, so, and this is going to, I'm going to tell you the differences. If you use one or the other, what you have to pay attention to. I'll be talking about that in this video. Okay, so I have all of my um, soil in the six cell blocks. So I'm using six cell blocks. Last week's video, I used soil blocks. So if you want to know how to do soil blocks, watch last week's video. Um, so the reason why, and again, remember, I'm, this is not happenstance. I'm, I'm being intentional about what I'm starting them in. So I'm starting these in six cell blocks because these are going to go straight from here to the ground. They're not going to be up potted. Once they're ready to go, they're going to go straight to the ground. So I don't need to use a mini 20 soil block and then up pot them. And everything I need for today can fit on one tray. So this 10 by 20 tray fits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 6 cell blocks. So I got 72 plants here that I'm going to start. So what I'm starting today is time. Remember, time was on our list last week. But when I got ready to start it, I realized my seed packet was empty because it had a hole in it and the seeds had come out. So we're starting time and I'm still within the window. So right now I'm 11 weeks before my first frost date. Time, you can do 10 to 12 weeks. So I'm right in the sweet spot. So I'm doing time today. 
I'm also doing more bok choy. Bok choy has a, a maturity date of about 50 to 55 days. Um, I have still have space in my bed. We planted out, I think, 12 bok choy last week. So this will just be another succession of bok choy, and it'll be fine. And it'll be another um, round of spring bok choy. Then I'm doing more cabbage because I still have space. That's the only reason I'm doing it. And then also for demonstration purposes today. Um, so I'm going to do another um, 12 set of cabbage. And then also the cabbage seedlings that we planted out last week, they look okay. They don't look great. And that's my fault because I probably should have covered them because one night it got down to like 30 degrees below freezing. And because they're young seedlings, I probably should have covered them and I didn't. So some of the leaves look frostbitten. So I fertilized today um, and watered really good and hoping that they'll bounce back. But in case they don't, we'll have more. That was just a mistake on my, on my part. Um, then we're going to do more lettuce. I have some Adriana lettuce that I'm doing, which is a pelleted version of lettuce. So I'll be able to show you the pelleted seed. And also, I found lettuce pelleted seeds that are um, labeled January 2023, which is a year ago. And remember, I read that you got to use pelleted seeds within a year. So they're right at the mark. We're going to see if they germinate. Okay. Then um, cilantro. We're going to do more cilantro. And then I'm going to do, you guys made me feel better about my chives and onions. So I'm going to try some chives. Instead of me direct sowing them, I'm going to try some chives and, and bunching onions in this and then transplant it out and see what happens. Many of you commented that you also don't have luck with chives and bunching onions, and then many of you also comment that you are having luck at this time of the year. So we're gonna try it and see what happens. So let's talk about the number one reason why, or the number one reason with starting seeds. That is germination. Let's talk about germination, right? I forgot, before we do that, let's um, water the soil. Oh. I usually just put mine on mist and I just water this soil really, really good. And really because there's no season here, I could do it on another setting, but this is also gonna tie into our number one. And hopefully you can hear me because the rain is picking up out there. Okay, so let's talk about the number one issue people have with starting seeds is germination either poor germination or very spotty germination. So let's talk about some of, of why that is. So obviously one, your seeds could be really, really old. Seeds will remain viable after a year. They don't expire, but they do lose um, their viability as the years go on and on. And especially if you have not kept them in a cool, dark place, if they've been in the hot sun all summer long or something like that, then the viability is going to lessen. So if you're doing seeds that let's say they're two or three years old, instead of you planting one, you might need to plant three, right? So that's one reason why your seeds may not be germinating because they're not um, as viable or poor quality or something like that. That's, that's one reason. Another reason uh, for poor germination is that your soil is not wet enough, right? And it's not maintaining, it's not maintaining contact with a wet, moist mixture, okay? So one of the reasons why I always pre-moisten my mix is to help with that. Will they still, still germinate if you don't pre-moisten and you just water after it? Yes, they will, okay? I'm telling you the preferred method. And one of the things that I wanna emphasize is this. If you are having trouble with starting seeds and you really, really, really wanna get it, then I would encourage you to do exactly, exactly, what I show you or whoever you're following, right? It doesn't have to be me, but if there's somebody else that you watch or follow and you've seen them have success, then do what they say. My point is do not do 25% of what you hear and then you complain about the results and you haven't done exactly what they said do. Like when you're starting out, this is my opinion. When you're starting out learning something new, to me, it's better to do it the way the expert has shown you how to do it. Then you can navigate. Then you can maneuver. Then you can switch things up and adjust and take risks. But don't do it your way, partly their way, and then say, it don't work. I didn't get the same results. You got a green thumb. My thumb is black. No. 
not until you do exactly what somebody has showed you then say it doesn't work but you know what if it worked for them it's gonna work for you why because there, there's nothing special about who you watch on youtube there's nothing special about me i just told you what kind of soil i use <laughs> so if you want to go get the exact same soil you can now i'm not saying that's the only soil that will work i'm not saying that at all but what i am saying is that before you discount or say it's not going to work make sure that you're doing exactly what you need to do here's a case in point this morning i made um homemade waffles for breakfast for the family right recipe was good it was good um and i'm real picky like my kids like that's their number one favorite breakfast food it's like not on my i mean it's on my list but it's like down here but i know that they love them so i made them for my son right and so one of the things is this was a new recipe and y'all have tried so many recipes but i followed the recipe to a t except one thing so the waffles were great but one of the reasons why i chose this recipe is because i like waffles crispy on the outside and like a nice texture on the inside right i don't like them soft thick and dense and i like crispy around the edges and this recipe said the crispiest waffles you'll ever make now mine were crispy ish <laughs> but they were i could have i could have taken some more crisp right and so i was like it don't work but then i had to remember one of the ingredients i did not have it gave a substitution and i used the substitution now the waffles were a nine out of ten but instead of me complaining that it wasn't 10 out of 10 and I didn't do the exact thing that the chef or whoever wrote the recipe did, I can't do that because I had a substitute. I hope y'all get my point. I'm not fussing. I just want you because this, this has happened to me where people will say, well, I did like when it comes to sourdough, I did what you said, but it didn't work. And I'm like, it has to work. If you did exactly what I did, and use the exact same flour, it's gonna work. So all I'm saying is, this will work. It will work. Okay, focus. So, number one reason or issue people have with starting seeds is germination. Why is that? It could be seed quality. The seed could be old. You may need to do more than one seed, right? It could be a watering issue. But here is the biggest issue, the biggest, like turn up, turn up the volume. When my kids were little, I would say, put on your listening ears. Here's the biggest reason why you do not have germination is because you are planting your seed too deep. I have been guilty when I first started seeds. Nobody told me that I'm just putting them on in there. So let's do a demonstration. Okay, let's get close. Okay. So one of the things that you can get is something called a dibbler, right? This is what it looks like, like that. And it has a pointed end and some of them come with markings. It'll say half an inch, inch and all that. Because on the back of the seed pack, it'll tell you how deep to plant your seeds. People don't pay attention to that. So basically the way it works is that you can just make a little hole, right? Just boom, boom, boom. And you can go as deep as you wanna go. So if I do like that, that's a big old hole, right? You can see that there. Versus if I do that, that's a small hole. So I'm just gonna do this for demonstration purposes. Okay, so you can see these different size holes. So like that is like a big hole. And so what some people do is they're putting their, their seed in a hole that big and then they're gonna cover it up with dirt. That's not the way you do it. Let's talk about why you don't do that. So when it comes to planting your seed, what we call the seed depth, you're, and on the back of your packet, it will tell you the depth that you're supposed to do. So for example, this one right here says a fourth of an inch in terms of depth, right there, depth to sow, a fourth of an inch, right? So a fourth of an inch, y'all, that ain't that much. But if I go to like a squash seed, it's gonna tell me an inch, right? Why is there a difference? So number one, all seeds are not planted the same depth. That's number one. So when it comes to seed depth, if it says a fourth of an inch and you put it down a half an inch, you're going to struggle to have germination, 
right? Versus if you're doing a squash seed and it says one inch, but you only do a fourth of an inch, you're going to also struggle with germination. Here's the reason why. One, the rule of thumb is you're going to plant your seed twice as it is deep as it is wide. So let's take, for example, this time, which says a fourth of an inch. Can you see that? Do you see how small those seeds are? They are tiny, right? Each seed has just enough within it, just enough energy to be planted the right depth, be moist, have light, and break through the soil. So when you plant this too deep, this is a tiny seed. It says a fourth of an inch. Like that's like, I mean, that's nothing. But if you plant it an inch, it does not have enough energy in the seed to germinate from way down there and push up through the soil. So a lot of you are not having germination because you're planting way too deep or you're planting everything the same level and you're not paying attention to your seed depth. And so it's germinating way down below the soil, but it does not have enough energy to break through the soil. Okay? That is the number one reason why you're struggling with germination. That is more than seed quality. That's more than your seeds being old. It's because you're not planting at the right depth. Now, the dibbler is something that you can use as a tool if you want to be like right on it. And if you're new starting out, I would recommend that. Now, I just eyeball it, right? Because I've been doing it for a while. But when I first started, me and the dibbler, girl, boy, we was best friends. Because I was trying to get it precise, right? So, number one reason with seed starting is germination. I want you to think about how have you been planting your seeds in the depth? Have you been using the same depth for everything, right? Is it too far down? And think about could that be your reason, okay? So, let's go ahead and plant these thyme seeds. So, let me back you up just a little bit. Our time is going right here. So I'm going to put my soil back like I had it, right? And then time, it says a fourth of an inch um, depth to sow, right? So that is gonna be very, very little. So sometimes I'll even just take, we'll use this for demonstration purposes again. I'm just gonna do like, I'm barely touching it, right? barely touching it because the seeds are so small and again I'm just taking my finger and there's no way I can plant just one because they're so tiny and that's okay now these are good old Dollar Tree seeds so if you missed my seed haul in the last video make sure that you go back and watch that we're going to prove to you that these Dollar Tree seeds work. Okay, you can't, you're not going to be able to see it because the seeds are so, 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 so tiny. Right? I'm going to go ahead and do, usually I do this at the end after I've done all my seeds, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to just go ahead and show you now. So basically, once I put the seed in, I'm going to cover it lightly with soil. So you can just take your finger and just cover it a little bit with soil. But remember, I'm not going to push it down deep. Why? Because I want my seed depth to be a fourth of an inch. So literally, I am just literally putting like tiny little bit of soil over it. Yes, a tiny amount. And sometimes you can just push the soil together over it and all of that. Now, another thing is when you go to water, and that's why I like my seed being already moistened. This is another reason to pre-moisten your soil when you can. It's because now when I get done seeding and I want to go back and water my seeds in, I'm going to have it on mist again. But you're going to watch me. I'm going to stand a ways back so that it's not directly on it. Because what I don't want it to do is to push the seed further down in the soil. Because right now it's kind of like right on top. I have a little bit of soil on it because it should be one fourth of an inch. If I go in with a heavy stream of water, it's going to move the seed and the seed is going to go further down. Hence, I'm not going to have germination, okay? So you have to be real careful. 
especially with these small seeds. Okay? All right. So that's one of the common issues with seed starting is germination. Seed quality, seed viability, pushing it too far down, your seed depth is off, something is off with the germination. The other thing with germination that causes you not to have germination is not having not having your seed moist at all times and maintaining contact with moisture. If your seed dries out, it is not going to germinate. Again, if your seed dries out, it's not going to germinate. So how do you keep it moist? Because one of the other issues we're gonna talk about is when you overwater, right? But for germination purposes and keeping it moist, here's a couple of things that you can do. One is use a humidity dome. Let me show you what that looks like. This is a humidity dome from Bootstrap Farmer. You can get them many different places, but y'all know I love Bootstrap Farmer, and right now I'm loving Epic Gardening too. Like he he's a he like one A, he one A. But here's a humidity dome that will fit over a 1020 tray. The reason why I like Bootstrap Farmer is because of the quality. So it's flimsy, not. I mean it's not flimsy. Like it's it moves because it's plastic. But there's some other cheap ones like it's like real, real flimsy. That's not like this. And it has the holes. So I can close this to where nothing is coming through. Like can't breathe. There's one on each side or I can leave them open. So I can literally put this over my 1020 tray. Let me show you. And that's going to help keep moisture in. So especially if you're having an issue with your watering, I would say invest in a humidity dome. Now, usually I'll use a humidity dome and I'll keep mine open, right? Because I want some. But if I'm really trying to trap heat, excuse me, trap heat and moisture, I will close it. I usually do that when I'm doing my tomatoes and my peppers, okay? But that is one example of a humidity dome and that's another way to keep moisture. Let me show you another option. New toy alert, okay? So let me show you this. This is new from Epic Gardening. Y'all know I love a toy. I love some accessories. So these six cell trays came from Epic Gardening. So now he has humidity domes that fit the six cell tray. Let's give you a demonstration. See this? This will fit directly over the six cell tray. You see that? Is that not the cutest? Look at that, y'all. Okay, now, why would I wanna have individual humidity domes versus this big one because things germinate at different times some things germinate within two to three days some things take seven to 14 days so once it germinates you want to pull the humidity dome off and i already feel like this video is about to be long but y'all this is how we learn okay once it germinates you take the humidity dome off you don't keep the humidity dome on there once it germinates so if I have a mixed tray of seeds, which I'm gonna have, where some, some may germinate in two to three days and some germinates in a week or so, then I pull off the humidity dome and some of them have not germinated. They may still could use benefit from the extra moisture. This is where this comes in because now I can just have them on here individually, right? And every one of them don't have to have a humidity dome. Make sense? So, it's a great concept. Do you have to have this? These little cute ones? You don't. You can use this, but just know once it starts to germinate, I don't care if it's just your spinach and everything else is not germinated yet, you want to take the humidity dome off because you don't want to keep that moisture on a plant that's already germinated at that level, okay? So, that is the number one reason when it comes to seed starting is germination, okay? So, let me show you. Let's go on to the second issue 
that comes across when you're starting your seeds. Okay, the second most common issue with seed starting is leggy plants. So your plants will look what they call spindly, like they'll be look almost fragile, like the legs will be long, the stem of the plant will be long, um, instead of them being shorter to the ground, meaning the stem shorter to the ground, close to the um, soil line and all that, leggy plants. That happens a lot. They look like they will tip over, they look real fragile the whole nine yards. Somebody commented when I showed my seedlings last week, they commented how good my seedlings look and said, mine don't look like that. Like they are all tall and spindly, right? Here's the most common reason why your plants are leggy is because the light is not, they, one, they don't have enough light or the light is too far away. So if you have your seedlings that you just started on a windowsill, in front of your bright patio window where you say it gets lots of sun it's not enough sun coming in through your window i don't care how big the room is i don't care how many windows you have it is not enough light okay so that's number one is that if you're growing indoors in your house you need artificial light you need a grow light if you don't have one your plants are going to be leggy the second issue is you don't have your plants close enough to the light so you may say well barbara i have a grow light my plants are still leggy usually that means your light is too far away now one of the things i talked about in the supply video when i talked about your top c starting supplies go back and watch that is ideally you should have grow lights that are adjustable that is ideal. You may not be there yet. You may be like, Barbara, I can't spend another dime. I get it, right? Put it in your budget for next year. But if you don't have a pulley system where you can adjust your grow lights, you're going to have to unhook them all the time and adjust them up and down. If you want great seedlings, if you don't adjust your light, you're going to have leggy plants. Your light should only be one to three inches above the seedling. So that means... When I go and take these in the house and put all of my seedlings under the light, the light going to be like right here. As the seedlings grow, I'm going to keep raising the light, right? You don't want the light to touch the plant and burn the leaves, but I'm going to keep raising it as the plant grows to where it's always one to three inches above. But if I start off and put this in my house and the light is up here, starting off, my plants are going to germinate and they're going to be leggy. Okay. Have I had leggy plants? Yes, I have. I did a video last summer about fixing my leggy plants because one of the ways to fix it is to just repot it in some soil and get it closer, um, deeper, deeper, deeper by the soil line, right? It's getting colder out here. The temperature is dropping and the rain is coming. So we're going to keep on moving. Um, so that is the reason why your plants may be leggy. Not enough light or the light is not close enough. For those who haven't seen my light set up, so let me back out. This is just um, one of those shelves. The only thing I have on it right now are these first week seedlings, but I wanna show you the light. Can you see how close that light is to the seedlings? I strongly encourage you, again, I will put links again to what I bought on the pulley system. I love it. We can adjust the lights up and down, okay? Another tool that I would recommend, again, if you can do it, is to get a timer for your grow lights. That way, your light, so let's talk about the amount of light. They should at least get 12 hours of light. 16 is ideal, right? But again, if you wake up at nine one morning, 10 the next morning, 6 a.m. the next morning, they'll get, they're getting varying things of light because you're probably not putting it on until you get up. But if you get a timer, you can just make it consistent. The light's going to come on. The light's going to go off, whether you're there or not. Get a timer. Okay? You can get one for less than, I, don't, I think it's like 10 bucks. I just bought one. This is the first time I've had one. Game changer. Get a timer. Okay? So that's the second issue. The third issue with seedlings is what we call damping off. 
So damping off is like you'll go look at your seedlings and it's like they're gone. Like they just disappeared. They damped off or they've fallen down into the soil. They look really, really weak. Things like that. So what is the cause of that? A lot of times that is caused by too much moisture, right? Or in a, in a rare case, you may have some bad soil. Maybe you didn't wash your trays good enough and you have some bacteria that's killing the plants. Um, I've never had a huge issue with damping off outside of just being too moist, right? And again, when you're new starting out, it's hard to get your moisture level right because either you're underwatering or you're overwatering. Another technique is to bottom water. What does that mean? That means I'm going to put water in the bottom of my tray. So instead of me, what we call overhead watering, I can put water in the bottom of my tray and that way it comes up through the bottom. It's a, a safer way to prevent overwatering. That is another technique that you can do. Another thing is get you a mister for your house. Where's my mister? Here we go. I think I talked about this in the supplies video. Get a mister. You can adjust how it comes out and you can mist your plants. Again, let it get... I'm not going to say let it get dry because somebody's going to take that too far. But if it looks moist, let it be. <laughs> if it looks dry, give it some water. I don't know how to tell you. There's not like a perfect science of, okay, give it two tablespoons of water every day. You just have to look at it and see and get get it right. Um, you know, get, get it right. The other reason, again, from a damping off perspective, from a moisture perspective, another technique that you should be doing, and I talked about this, I think, on the supplies video, is get you a fan. So the plants and the seedlings need ventilation. They need air. Because remember, when they're outside, the wind is blowing. There's ventilation. And so if they're in your house, under humidity domes, on heat mats, and on um, other things, they need ventilation. That'll help with the moisture, okay? That will help with the moisture. I'm going to tell you about another th thing you can do for moisture, which leads me to the fourth common issue with seed starting. So the fourth issue with seed starting is that people have what they call fungus gnats. So they have gnats flying around their things, or like I said, it's also, like I said, the damping off. And so another product that you can use is vermiculite. Let me show you what it looks like. Today is like show and tell. This is vermiculite. We're going to do this now, and I'm going to show you. This helps with moisture. It's also going to help with fungus gnats, right? So you're just going to take it and sprinkle a light layer across your seedlings, just like that. It helps to retain moisture, and it's going to help with fungus gnats, right? So just like a little light dusting of vermiculite. I got this from Amazon. I will put a link down in the notes. You can get it from a nursery, the big box stores, all of that. So you see, it's just like a little light dusting. It's relatively inexpensive. I think this bag might've cost $10 and it's three quarts. But it'll tell you, it's 100% natural, improved aeration, Faster germination. Why? Because your soil is staying moist and it fends off fungus and disease and slowly releases nutrients and improved growth. So vermiculite. Okay. That'll help with your moisture and that'll help with fungus gnats and all of that. So y'all, just like that, we planted all of our, uh, on one of the um, in-betweens, I went ahead and did all my seeds after I showed you about the germination, right? So we talked about the four main issues with seed starting germination um fungus gnats um what you call it leggy plants and um it was another one i forgot that fast you you guys know you you saw the video I, I lost my train of thought so the four main issues and hopefully i gave you some tips some tips some tools and some techniques i did show and tell i showed you humidity domes i showed you vermiculite i showed you um the dibbler i showed you the mister so again if you have to go back and watch this video over and over and take notes and figure out 
what did I do different? And maybe that's the reason why I'm not having the result that I want. I hope that this helps you. So again, if you're nervous about starting seeds, I want to encourage you. I'm pushing you off the fence in love. I want to encourage because I know if you can get this skill, it is a game changer for you and your family. So whatever questions you have, if there's any issue that I did not address, put it down below. If I know the answer, if I've experienced it, I will chime in and give you my opinion. If I need to do another video, I will. Or somebody else can chime in. If you have any questions, put them down below. But I hope that this helps you on your seed starting journey. Also, um, I'll show some footage again of how our seedlings are doing from last week. Right now, only one thing has germinated. I'll insert some footage right here. Here are the plants that, or the seeds that we started last week. You can see in the mini 20 soil blocks right now, only my eucalyptus has germinated, which it germinated really fast. Eucalyptus usually takes a lot longer, but you can see those seedlings are doing well. But as of now, six days in at the time of this video, nothing else has um, germinated. Okay, so you can see that last week, um, seedlings they're right at six days and most of them take seven to 14 days to germinate so we're not going to count it a loss we're going to give it another week and see if we get some more stuff to germinate besides um the eucalyptus right but now we have another one to go in the house um and start and like i said most of these we've already done before um but i'll be back next week with another video of seed starting whatever we're supposed to start at 10 weeks and all of that so each week we're starting seeds I'm giving you tips. I'm showing you what I'm doing. I'm showing you what I'm planting. So literally, if you're in my zone, you can just like track right along with me. And I would encourage you to watch all the videos in the Seed Starting Playlist. Remember, gardening is a journey. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time, friend.